a 2020 refresh of the Axial Bomber. What's going on everyone? Today I've got the refresh of the Axial RR10 Bomber here on the bench. Now if you're not familiar with the Bomber, just maybe you're new to the hobby, the Bomber is a 2.2 sized kind of rock racing based vehicle. Now 2.2 refers to the size of the wheels and that usually correlates to a larger size tire. That is exactly what we have here. So compared to something like an SCX 10, 2, or 3, this is going to be a larger overall vehicle with a longer wheelbase, bigger tires, more suspension travel, and wider width axles. The RR10 Bomber initially came out in late 2015 and was pretty much unchanged until just this new release. Let's run over some of the details about this truck, just gonna give you an overall of what we're looking at here. Now, this is called the RR10 Bomber. Bomber refers to the chassis style, which is a model of the Bomber Fabrications chassis that you see underneath here. Now, the main obvious difference from the one here you see on the bench is that this has a new livery. This is a savvy off-road themed livery, but there is still a Bomber Fabrication themed version that is updated from the original. The next major visual difference that you'll see is that this truck now has silver or chrome-ish looking wheels and Falcon tires. Now the wheels are beadlock wheels and they're a race line design on this livery. And the Falcon tires appear to be the same that we saw previously on the Yeti kit version. This setup comes with a functional spare tire mounted onto the rear, which is easily removable if you choose, as well as the mount underneath of it. So you don't have anything hanging off the backside of the chassis if you don't want that look. Now to go along with the gray and black theme and the fact that the savvy livery has Fox on it. The shock parts were changed slightly, but mainly in color only. You'll now see black molded plastic caps and uh, preload adjusters versus the blue versions that were molded for the bomber theme. Next up front, we've got the addition of some lighting. We've got two pod lights, one on either side of the front stinger, and then a single LED light bar in the center. Those lights are powered off of the AE5L ESC that's inside. And that AE5L also powers a rear light setup. Up. In the back, we now see them installing the Axial EXO rear light pod. That's kind of just a, a portion that comes off the back of the roof and it's got four LED housings molded into it. Only two of these have LEDs in it as it comes out of the box. Now this mount also has a plate underneath of it that has a couple of additional holes where if you would like to mount the original EXO radiator, there's a couple of holes that line up perfectly for that. So you can have a rear mounted radiator, which does look appropriate in this style of vehicle. While the Falcon tires that come on this do appear to be the same as that came on that Yeti kit version, the BFG tires that come on the bomber fabrication theme are a new tire completely. A new molding, tighter tread pattern, have a good scale look, but they're completely different than the previous version. Also something to note that the AE5L ESC does now use an IC3 plug for the battery. They got rid of that star or Dean's connector that was previously installed in the RR10 and went to the Horizon IC3. That's the same as the EC3 plug, but the IC3 has the intelligence added in in case you're using the smart technology, LiPos, chargers, ESCs and so forth. Looking at the front axle on this, we'll see that it's the same AR60 that we're all very familiar with. And there's been a couple of updates still though. One is that this is now using the SMT10 version of the molded C-Hub. That was a much stronger C-Hub than the previous version that was included on the AR60s in the Bomber or the Wraith. So it's just a beefed up version overall. However, the knuckles are still the exact same version that we saw on the RR10 previously. The front steering linkage is still an all molded design, but it's connected to a now metal servo horn mounted to the new Spectrum servo. The Raceline beadlocks do have a removable center hub that is compatible with aftermarket Vanquish SLW hubs. So if you'd like, you can replace that plastic hub with an aluminum version in a very simple way. Completing the front axle assembly, we will see that we still have dog bone axle shafts and a centered metal ring and pinion set. All of the links and link geometry connecting the axle to the chassis are unchanged both front 
and rear. The rear AR60 axle on this remains completely unchanged from the previous versions. Also new to this bomber setup is a new Spectrum DX3 radio. Now, this radio has a couple of small things that you can note that do make a big difference to a lot of the bomber customers. First of all, you will see that this is a Spectrum radio that has the smart technology. A nice thing about that is that the receiver included inside of this RR10 is compatible with other or upgraded Spectrum radios. Some of the other Spectrum receivers that are included in other vehicles from Horizon are not compatible with nicer upgraded radios, but this one in fact is, which is nice for any of you guys who are already Spectrum owners. This radio also has an auxiliary third channel and can be programmed from two to five positions. So if you have other accessories you plan to add in the future, this radio is going to be able to handle it. Also, all of the channels on this radio do have endpoint adjustments, which is a nice thing to have in an RTR radio. And one other simple addition to this radio that is going to be a nice thing for a lot of people that enjoy the bomber is a simple extension for your thumb. And that means you can throttle and steer with one hand. I'm very used to this style of driving and this radio feels very comfortable to try and drive one-handed. The reason that this is a feature that may be appealing to a lot of you guys who are looking for a bomber is because a bomber is the preferred vehicle for people who are interested in doing the ultra sponsored 5Ks that are you see at so many axial events and just other types of RC events in general. And what that is, if you've never heard of it, is Ultra is actually a shoe company, obviously a company that's big into running. And what they've done in the RC industry is really push these events where they help organize and even arrange the courses, the whole thing themselves, where they set up a 5K course and it's timed, you know, checkpoints, lap numbers, to try and get you to run 5K as fast as you can behind your RC. The Bomber seems to be the choice of it just because of its longer wheelbase, bigger tire sizes. You can generally push this vehicle about as fast as most people are running that type of distance, especially over the type of terrain that you'll often find in one of these events. The Bomber is incredibly capable, super stable at speeds, has a ton of optional upgrades. It's been a platform that's been around for a long time. Overall, that is what makes this the pick for those events. Now, you won't find me running 5Ks, but that doesn't mean that I enjoy my bombers any less. The bomber has been a vehicle that I've enjoyed for countless hours in the past, and I actually haven't had a bomber for a while, so I'm actually pretty excited to have this one again. And now it's just re-sparked my want to build something out of this and just have a good time with it. While the 2.2 market has kind of lost some popularity in comparison to the boom of the 1.9 market, that doesn't mean that the advancement and development of aftermarket things for the 2.2s has completely stopped. There's lots of people with all kinds of things specifically for this chassis. And I feel like I should explore some of these new options now since it's been so long since I've built one myself. So I already have all kinds of plans for what I'm going to do. So this definitely won't be the last time you see this new RR10 on my channel. I'm gonna get to work soon on really personalizing this vehicle here to just really fit what I'm looking for. The out of the box wide, low and long base of this bomber is just really what allows it to conquer the terrain. It does take a little bit of a different driving style if you've never driven a 2.2 trailing arm car, just because trailing arms and a longer wheelbase can handle things a little bit differently. Terrain has to maybe be driven in a slightly different way, but it can just really be a monster once you learn the characteristics of this vehicle. For my out of the box impressions of this truck overall, I love the new paint scheme. I like the change in color of the shock parts, the you know satin chrome style wheels I think look pretty good. The Falcon tires look pretty good. The foams on this do seem exceptionally soft. I think that it could really benefit right away from a much stiffer foam, especially if you're trying to just drive this thing at speed. The stock brushed motor that comes in it isn't going to have blistering speeds, but I think that even with that, you could see these tires really starting to roll on you too easily. But being that this is now a beadlock wheel, you're easily going to be able to dismount that, remove the old foams, put new foams in, and then remount the tires. And it's not going to be this huge headache of trying to remove glued tires or having to buy new wheels and tires and foams right away. 
So little things like that are nice tweaks to this platform to just kind of bring it up into current time. Now, by no means do I think that the 2.2 class is going to make a huge resurgence in popularity and overpass the 1.9, but to see the few tweaks that they made to just refresh this and bring it up to kind of current status in today's market, I think is just a welcome sight to see. I know there's still a ton of fans of the bomber out there. My bomber budget build from back in the day still applies to most of this truck, which is great. So with that, let me know what you guys are ready to see on this platform. I have some ideas. I have some big ideas and big plans of what I'm gonna do and transform this just because of the AR60 platform and the familiar bomber cage that I always like so much just really reminded me how much I enjoyed working on this the last time. So again, a ton of stuff to come on the RR10. Thanks again for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Hit the like button if you enjoy the content. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. As always, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.